Lucia Elena Braganza. Your Majesties, I am Mistress Lucia Elena Braganza, and as a bard, I am sometimes called upon to tell stories of that which is, that which was, that which should be remembered. At Penzik, his praise Duke Fuller and I shared with you the story of Baroness Anne Mulligan. Anne who's worked quietly behind the scenes, supporting others taking center stage. Anne whose arts of carving and block printing have decorated many garments and objects. Anne whose books are treasured by their recipients. Anne who has crisscrossed your vast kingdom, traveling to the far reaches to teach, to participate in the tournaments of the arts and the crafters ring, and to facilitate others doing so. Anne, who has shown the qualities of noblesse, courage, generosity, franchise, honor, truth, justice, mercy, largesse, and more. As the hero must, Anne has spent her vigil com in contemplation, reflecting on her deeds and her future. And now we come to the point of ending one chapter and beginning another in a way that only your majesties may. And therefore, I would beg a boon that you elevate. <laughs> <laughs> that you elevate Bar Baron Al that you elevate Baroness Anne Mulligan to the order of the world. Stand aside and make way for Baroness Anne of Sternfeld Barony in the book of busy morals, let her name <laughs> be written today, printed boldly in what letters stand for pain or etch or engraved. Just so long as it is recorded, the mouse that roars was Laurel today. and assembled nobles. I, Duke Guler, Knight of the Society, Master of the Laurel and of the Pelican, do send words to your court on behalf of Anne Mulligan, vigilant to the Order of the Laurel. I first met Anne when she moved to the kingdom and began to display her art at your Tournament of the Arts. Her skills continued show, to show true prowess at her art, which she taught freely, and her skill continued to grow. Over the several years that followed, she continued to find new ways to challenge herself in printmaking and its research. She took criticism and praise equally well as she developed her own style and methods. Of this, I am quite sure, since I gave liberal doses of both, because she <laughs> to help her on her path. 
Mulligan had shown herself to be the very model of courtesy and chivalry as she goes about her apartment. She is kind and open to those she teaches, spending time to answer every question, no matter how small, and acts in virtue and courtesy when she gives up herself for demos, classes, and for her kingdom. Anne's work and talent make me work a little harder to be a better artisan, and I can think of no higher praise. Your Majesties, I commend Anne Mulligan to you as being a true worthy of this realm, and look forward to her addition into the Order of the Laurel. Yours in service, Louis. Is there a pelican to speak of Anne's service? No, Your Majesty. I bring words of Dame Maggie McCree. She writes, Your Majesty. I am Dane Nike McKee, Order of the Pelican, and I would speak to you today of Anne's spirit of service. For many years I have been friends with this wonderful lady. I have watched her service to her barony, region, and kingdom with a smile on her face and in her heart. She currently serves as the Baroness of Sturmfeld, offering warmth and leadership to her people. This job can be quite challenging, but she performs the role with grace and care. No task is too large or too small to receive her help. This is indeed what service is all about. She is my peer, and I commend her to your majesty with all my heart. Your Master of Defense, to speak of Anne's courage. Where is your majesty? I bring the words of another whose responsibilities I kept in some of the Unto their Mediterranean majesties, sends Teacher Brown von Bremen, premier of your order of defense, his most humble greeting. May this day shine upon your majesty and bring you such joy as your invitation to Her Excellency Anne Mulligan brings to me and to her barony of Sternfeld. The Order of Defense speaks often of the structure of peers at their elevation. Often this is shown through the seemingly effortless labors of art, service, or strength of honor. Baroness Anne has shown this virtue in her art as your moral in the test. This is now well known. She also shows this virtue in her personal grace and kindness in the face of challenges and adversity. Many years past, she showed me her work as I was testing the depths of judging a regional arts and sciences. As a new and somewhat ignorant student, I asked her foolish and useless questions about her copper and great printing. She received my words with an uncommon understanding and answered me back with a wisdom and willingness to share that I have rarely found in a teacher of any art or skill. Not only this, but disappointment or frustration she truly must have felt at my fumbled inquiries. Her grace and aplomb seemed natural and effortless as a well-timed blow when a timely counsel made wise for Your Majesty, Baroness Anne's seemingly effortless grace and kindness perfectly complements her art and show her to be in every way my view, and I commend you to her, I commend her to you in all ways. Since this ninth day of September from the heart of the is there a member of the populace to speak in Anne's generosity? Hi, there is. My name is Lady Tula. I was formerly of Sternfeld. I have recently moved to Illigen, but still I consider Sternfeld part of my home. Anne is part of my home. She is a person that will welcome you. It will Make sure that you have the, the necessities that you need. She's a person who cares about people and cares about the SCA and the things that we do. She is my friend and I'm very lucky to have her. And I commend her to you. Many years ago, you came to me at a practice, screwed up your courage and said, I want to be your cadet. And I looked you in the eye and said, no. And you looked so dejected. I told you instead that I wanted you as an apprentice first. I saw that art in your eye then. I still see it today. I will gladly accept you as a sister world, but I must take this back.
Majesty. She is no longer a student. She is yours to deal with as a member of your bodies. Thank you for all. Summon our most loyal companions of the Order of the Laurel. Companions of the Laurel, present yourselves before their messages. <laughs> Noble lords and ladies, is it your opinion that Anne Mulligan is worthy of elevation into the Order of the Laurel? Aye. And, right mindful of your service to the society, responsive to the wishes of your peers, we are resolved to create you a companion of the Laurel. As the Laurel wreath has ever stood for excellence, so do we give it to you as the symbol of the mastery of your art. Therefore, will you, Anne, give us your work to continue to fulfill the requirements set forth for the governance of this order, as you most surely have till now? I will. Will you increase your labors nobly, increase your talents as befits one of your rank, and seek to disseminate your talents and abilities society? I will. Do you promise to train any dependents you may have to do likewise? <laughs> yes, Your Majesty, this is one of my personal medallions, and as I fought side by side with her, one of my knights changed to spend this medallion. Your Majesty, there are two others that did not make it today, one from Master Llewellyn of uh, Sternfeld, and another from Duchess uh, Wentworth. Claymore of Edenville, which is on its way. This is from Bamfane, Mistress Maeve of Barony uh, Monstonitris in Edenville, that she has worn for many years. And she has sent this to him as well. Take from our hands these symbols of nobility and tokens of our esteem. Wear them proudly so that all may recognize your service as we have acknowledged it this day. Is there a coat? There is, Your Majesty. This coat was made by Mistress Laura Bullard. Wear this coat as an outward token of your new station. Is there a veil? There is, Your Majesties. This was actually made and printed by Anne's own hand. Wear this veil as a symbol of your excellence. Now swear your oath of fealty. Piece 
depicts the artist in situ. Her many tools at hand, sheets of paper, pots of inks and paints, awls and chisels, needles and sinews, quills and nibs. This mouse's nest is never neat, but from creative chaos comes great beauty and satisfaction. A table of contents lists many chapters. Anne, lover of Tonus. Anne, mother of sons and dragons. Anne, mistress of patience and ingenuity. Anne, wielder of weapons, whose rapier flashes as deftly as brush or chisel. Anne, student of art, who learns and grows. Anne, mentor and teacher, who leads by example and shares her glad heart with all who seek her knowledge and skill. We add to the final page of volume one, wherein a wreath of laurel leaves crowns her noble brow. Volume two shall be magnificent. <laughs> in consideration of the excellence and expertise in the arts and sciences displayed by Anne Mulligan, most especially in the arts of paper, block printing, and decorative stamps, and the generosity of spirit with which she has shared these with our society, we are minded to create her a companion of the Order of the Laurel, to be in all places numbered a peer of our realm, with all the rights, privileges, insignia, precedence, and responsibilities thereto ever take. For Master 